fellow tubers, this is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from Sunny Mesa, Arizona. And today we're gonna be grafting onto these two mulberry trees, this one here and this one here. There were wild mulberries. Uh, some guy had a listing on Craigslist or offer up, I forget which, but he wanted 10 bucks each. He said they popped up in his garden. So I rushed over there and picked them up for 20 bucks. I got two trees. They've been in pots now for about, uh, I would say nine months and uh, they grew quite a bit. They were only about this tall here when I got them. So maybe two feet, two and a half feet, somewhere around there. And uh, I like them because they got uh, low trunks on them, but you can see they got a lot of crossing branches. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna do uh, V grafts. We're gonna be using a grafting tool that I got off of Amazon just to give it a try, see how it goes. It's got a, uh, a V tool and then uh, I don't know what you call it, but it kind of looks like a puzzle piece or it's a V, but it's got a ball at the end. Uh, it should lock it in a little better. And then we're going to do uh, whip and tongue grafts. So I have from the last mulberry grafting video, I have uh, Northern Red, Texas Red and Black Persian left over. And uh, being wild mulberries, I don't know if these guys are going to fruit, um, if they're going to be male, if they're going to be hermaphroditic. I don't know if they're going to be white mulberries, black mulberries, red bolt mulberries. Uh, I have no idea. So we're going to graft onto these, but we're going to leave some of the original branches. So they're going to be four in one trees. We're going to do uh, one of each variety grafting onto each. And then we're going to take those cuttings because we're going to we're going to nip some of the tops of these guys. And we're going to take those cuttings and uh, we're going to pot them up in a bin of perlite. You're going to need some electrical tape. You're gonna need some parafilm. We're gonna use a grafting knife for this. Um, normally I just use my other knife uh, for like bark grafts and stuff, but this one here, it's a uh, old bear grafting knife purchased off of Amazon. I think it was about 30 bucks. It's got a lock on it. It's got a, a bark lifter. Uh, we're not gonna use that for this, but for the whip and tongues, you're gonna need either a razor blade or a razor knife or a grafting knife. Um, you can use a larger knife, but you're gonna have to sharpen it uh, razor sharp. So it's going to be a, a very low, low angle sharpness on that blade. So this is just going to work out a lot better. It's a lot more easier to maneuver. So this here is the grafting kit or tool that I got from Amazon. Um, comes with a bunch of little things, some tools and different blades and stuff, little handy carrying case. But basically this is it. It's got snippers on the top. And then this here is where you're gonna put your branch. And as you can see, when you squeeze it, it's gonna do a positive V and a negative V or an inverted V and a regular V, however you wanna say it. Or you can do the puzzle piece one. And uh, so you're gonna do your scion one way your branch the other and you should have a perfect mating V as long as you get the branches about the same size you know what you're grafting onto and the scion and we're gonna need labels so I got these labels plastic labels you saw them in the other bark grafting video for the mulberries it's just a regular white label to write on those with a sharpie and label it so we don't forget what's what and then we're gonna need some tin foil to wrap it with to protect it from the sun so let's get started on those graphs. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pre-wrap these scions using the parafilm. So basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna start about an inch from the bottom. We're gonna start wrapping this guy and you just gotta pull a little tight, keep pressure with your thumb, use your other hand, to twist the scion and you're looking for about a 50% overlap on this tape. So if you see here, you can see the overlap right there or you can look through here and you can see it's about 50%. So we're just gonna wrap this, all right? Sometimes it helps to switch hands when you get halfway up. And then when we get to the top, we're just gonna keep twisting, twisting, twisting 
and then we're going to pull it off so we got a little cord hanging off the top okay and that's it so this is 50 percent overlap we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this to the other two scions All right, guys, so the next step is figuring out where we're going to put these. So you want to put them down low, all right? You don't want to put them all the way up the top of the branch because then your branch is going to be too high. You're not going to be able to pick the fruit, and it's just going to make it a nightmare. So pick a lower branch, preferably close to where it's branching out of the main trunk, or if you're doing the whole tree, down low on the main trunk if it's a smaller tree. So what I like to do is I try to figure out where... I'm going to graft on. I look at the tree and say, where am I going to graft on to this? Okay. And then I go through my selection of scions and I try to match up the base where I'm going to be grafting to the branch that I'm going to be grafting onto. So if you follow me over to the tree, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with this one here. This is the uh, Texas red. All right, guys, for this Texas red, I plan on grafting onto this branch here. All right. So what we want to do is we want to hold this next to it and with our fingers just go across and it should feel about the same. So what we're trying to do is match the cambium layer from this to this. So if this is bigger than this, we're going to have to move the scion after we do our V-graph to one side and that's going to leave half of it open and you're not going to get a really good looking graft. Now if this is too big, and this is too small, then we gotta do a completely different graft. You're not gonna be doing a V graft. Uh, you could try a whip and a tongue, but the problem is you're gonna wind up with a bigger branch once this starts growing than the base, and you could have issues with it snapping in the wind, or if you're in an area that gets snow, uh, it could snap under a heavy load of snow, and it's just gonna look funky. It's not gonna look good. So you wanna go bigger on this branch and smaller on this one, or the best bet is to match this size to this size. So if you put these here and you run your finger across front and back, it's pretty even. So this guy, we can graft him anywhere over here, but I'd like to do a lower graft. That way this branch takes the place of this one in by the end of the summer, all right? And then we're gonna do a couple of other grafts down low here too. We're gonna do a graft onto here, and then we're gonna do a graft a little bit up higher on this main trunk right up here that we're probably gonna graft onto, right here. We're gonna trim these guys off, trim this off, and then this tree, once we get this grafted, this one will be done. We'll move on to the next one, and then we're gonna take these branches that we cut off and we're gonna do a bin of cuttings. So we should have about probably 50 or so cuttings off of these two. And then this main branch up here, we're gonna leave that on there that way we have whatever wild mulberry it is, but on the bottom, we're gonna have these other varieties that are known fruiters. And then in the future, if this is a male or just some odd junky fruit that we don't like, we could air layer this off or graft onto it with another variety. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with this black Persian right here. We got the label printed out right there. This is the branch that's going on and let's see here so we want it situated right about that right there so we're gonna go let's see probably right about there feels about even front to back so we're gonna cut it right here so let's use our amazon grafting tool okay and we're just gonna whack this guy off right there okay i'm gonna put this branch aside and we'll chop that up so now what we need to do is we need to clip the end of this guy. So we want him to go out this way. So we gotta be careful which way we graft this. And you can see they match up pretty good. So we're gonna clip this guy. And we're gonna do a positive V in him. So right there. snip okay so there's our v cut right now we got to flip the tool around 
and we gotta do a V cut in the exact same direction because we want the same curvature. This guy, you can see how he's bent. We want him to curve out. So we want our V right about there. So we're gonna do our best here. We're gonna get this guy in there. And, oh, we're going backwards with the tool. Good thing I didn't do that. All right. Right about there. Snip, okay. So now we got our two Vs cut, right? And it looks like I cut it a little lopsided, but that's okay, we're gonna do it anyway. So you could see this green layer right in here and there, that's what we're trying to match up. So we need to match that up with the outside bark. All right, right like that. We're gonna pull this parafilm up a little bit. All right. And we're going to put him on this way. So he's angling out. And then we're just going to start wrapping. So it's easier if you do about a 10 inch piece. All right, to start off with. So try to get these guys out of the way. And we're going to start down here. All right. Oops. Try this one more time. All right, lock him in there. Not the easiest one you're filming, guys. All right. We're in a wrap. We want to make sure this guy stays in right where we put him. All right. So we got one wrap up. All right. We want to push down on it, if possible. We want to wrap it one more time going down. Okay, guys. So we got this guy on there. He's pretty good. But we're going to go over this with electrical tape, too. Because we want to make sure this guy is pushed down as far as it can go, nice and tight. And we want this V to be nice and tight. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get about 10 inches of electrical tape. All right. And we're gonna start at the bottom. And we're gonna wrap it tight. You gotta pull super tight on this, okay? So every time you get to the front or the back, pull that sucker tight and push down on that graft. We want that graft locked into that branch. All right, we're gonna go a little bit above the graft and then we're gonna go back down, pulling tight the whole time on the tape and pushing down on this grafted branch or scion. All right. Number one reason why these guys fail is because you didn't line up the cambium layers and you didn't have them grafted or taped together tight enough. So that guy's on there. I mean, you can see it's almost like a solid branch. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this branch with the Texas Red. And then we're going to do another branch up high. And that is going to be the Northern Red Mulberry. So let's get started on this Texas Red. All right, so we got this Texas Red. We want to graft him again down low, all right? So we're gonna find exactly where he lines up. Let's see. That's a pretty good fit right here, all right? So this one, we're gonna do a different one. We're gonna do a whip and tongue, okay? So for this, we need our grafting knife. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a diagonal cut through the branch. It's gotta be perfectly straight, all right? And we got a cat visiting us. All right. All right. 
So you can see that's pretty damn straight. Now we're gonna do a cut this way, straight in. And this you're gonna do in a rocking motion, all right? So this is gonna give us three points of contact here with the cambium. This guy's gonna slip into that one. So we're gonna come, just to make this a little easier for us, we're gonna cut this off right about, where do we say, right about here, let's say. All right, these cutters suck. I'm gonna get better ones. All right, guys, it's official. The Amazon grafting tool has our very, very crappy cutter. All right, ready? Snip, that went right through, perfect. All right, we'll put that guy aside. And now, we're gonna do the same thing. So, we wanna get our graft right about to here. So we're gonna start right about there, and we're gonna do the same thing. Out, cat. All right, not as straight as I usually make them, but good enough. So now, as you can see, we got this split in here. All right, so this split is going to fit inside this other one. And you know what? I think we're going to cut this a little bit shorter. And guys, you want to work kind of quick here because the scions are like fruit. If they dry out, they oxidize just like an apple. If you left an apple sitting out, they get that roundness to them. And once they oxidize, that's dead tissue. It's not going to not gonna work anymore. So let's see how that is. All right, that's pretty close, guys. So now... We want to get our scion slipped in, all right? So we're going to go up about two thirds of the way here. We're going to cut it down. We're going to do it in a rocking motion. All right. All right. Now comes the fun part. I'm slipping these two guys together. Right about there. So as you can see, we have one flap, two flaps, three flaps. We've got a lot of cambium contact there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our grafting tape. We're gonna rip off about 10 inches, just like I always do. And we're gonna start below the graft and we're gonna wrap, pulling tightly. We're gonna come back around. So we'll do two passes on that. All right. That's actually pretty tight already. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go with the electrical tape. Let me get the electrical tape out of there. Put the ferrofilm in there, hold it away. Now we're gonna do 10 inches. Alright. We're gonna start at the bottom here. This you have to pull very, very tight. Just like I said before, make sure you don't when you're pulling, make sure you don't rip rip your graft off. So we're gonna keep pulling, pulling, pulling. Alright, but we're gonna make sure this graft is nice and tight. Now being a, a whip and tongue, you don't wanna pull too far down on this because you can wind up ripping it right through 
and splitting it. We don't want to do that. So that guy's on there. Let's see how tight it is. Pretty good. All right, since this branch is so close to here too, we don't want this branch knocking into it. So we're gonna wind up putting a spacer in here at the bottom just to space this branch out. All right, and we got one more bud to graft on. And we're gonna graft him on right down about here. Right here. So this one's a black Persian. So we're gonna do our 45 degree cut right below the bud. This one's cutting a little bit easier. I think the other ones were a little bit dry. And then we're gonna go over the top and we're gonna peel off the bud. All right. There's our bud. So now we're gonna come down here. We're gonna do a 45. Let's do it right here. All right, peel the bark away a little bit. This is where this end comes in handy. Fits in there perfect, as you can see. Let's get our little chip in there. All right, and we're gonna have to start right there. We're just gonna run this guy down. All right, peel that out. Then we're gonna put our graft in there. And he fits pretty good. Grafting tape. All right. Do about six inches. Get these branches out of the way. Again, we're gonna start below the graft. Pulling tight. Got to stretch a little bit, not a lot, but oops. See, he moved. That's one thing you got to be careful of. Make sure that stays lined up. All right. Now with this one, there's not too much above it, but we're still gonna hit it with the electrical tape. Let's get our electrical tape, we'll do about four inches or so. I'm gonna rip it off. I'm gonna wedge it back in here. Put those branches away. There we go. All right. Right above the bud. There's the bud. We're gonna pull it nice and tight. So that's it guys, this one's done. All right guys, so this one, uh, I'm not gonna do close-ups, I'm just gonna zip to it, and we're gonna get uh, Northern Red, Texas Red, Black Persian, and we're gonna do some bud crafts on there too. So I'm gonna do this in a uh, time-lapse style, so let's get going on it. All right, that's it guys. So both of them are grafted. We got uh, bud grafts on there and we got three different varieties grafted onto each one. Um, we left some of these main runners here. 
There's one here and then that one there. They're gonna be multi-trunked, which is uh, something I like. I'm not a fan, it just sticks with little balls on top. The only step left is to wrap it with tin foil. So we're gonna get a piece of tin foil. We're just gonna take it. So basically what I just did was, I just wrapped it, I left a little bit on the bottom open for light to get in, and then I closed the top off, closed the bottom, that way uh, water will stay out, light, direct light's going to stay out because the sun goes that way. Um, this way is north, that way is south, east, and towards you is west. So this is going to keep it shaded, but it's going to allow some light to get in there. These, uh, these scions are going to need light to grow so not direct sun but they are going to need indirect light so we just leave a little bit open and as they start to take we can open it more and more and more so let's finish up the tin foiling on the rest of these graphs all right guys so these are uh, wrapped with tin foil they're all ready to go they're not going to get any direct sun they should take in probably about I would say a month to two months. Um, as you can see when I was cutting them open, the sap is starting to flow. Um, most of these buds have not woken up yet, but there are some buds on these branches that are starting to wake up. So this is the ideal time to do it. Right now, uh, our temperatures are at night. They could vary anywhere from uh, the mid to upper 30s to the mid to lower 50s and uh, daytime temperatures are kind of up and down too you know it's, it's starting to come up on springtime uh here in the valley uh if you're in city limits you know not out in the desert um usually the second week of march is when we are frost free historically so we don't have to worry about frost so um the good thing is and this is a, a crazy phenomenon i noticed um air layers and graphs and stuff like that they're above ground, right? So when daytime temperatures get warm, it tells that that scion or air layer to start waking up. So I've noticed, I've, I've had air layers on a lot of my trees in the yard and uh, the branches on the tree that are not air layered, a lot of them are still resting or they're just starting to bud out. Whereas my air layers, uh, the branches that were air layered last fall that haven't rooted out yet, uh, they started budding out about a month ago. So, you know, just being above ground and getting that daytime warmth, even though it's cold at night, that daytime warmth, that triggers them to start growing. So these graphs being above ground, uh, they're going to start wanting to grow right away and since the sap is already flowing in these these branches underneath the bark that's that white milky stuff that was oozing out as I was, as I was cutting it since that sap is starting to flow um, that's going to supply the cuttings with the nutrients and moisture they need from the root system of the plant and they're going to start to fuse right away so like I said in about a month to two months these guys should be pretty well anchored onto the tree um, at that point we can go ahead and remove the tin foil and if we need to we can cut some of the parafilm and leaf from the buds to allow them to start to grow um, but usually that's not necessary it's only if they really get stuck under there and they really start to smush and bunch up you know you don't want a deformed uh, branch coming out of that because each one of these buds are going to turn into branches. So, like I said, we got three varieties on here. They're all known female fruiters, and they're grafted onto wild mulberries, which are an unknown. You know, it, it could be a male, it could be a female, it could be a hermaphrodite, it could be awful fruit, it could be good fruit, it could be the next latest and greatest thing. We don't know. So we left a couple of those on there. Um, the important thing when you're grafting, two guys, is when you graft onto a branch. So we grafted onto these, we cut the branch above it because we want all the sap flowing up this branch to go into this cutting. If there's a branch above it, 
it's gonna skip that cutting and the cutting may anchor onto the tree but it's never gonna grow and I've, I've had this happen before um, so usually what I recommend is um, if you're grafting if you do a graft like this where it's a V graft or a lip and tongue or something like that you're basically lobbing off the branch above it so it shouldn't really be an issue um, but if you're doing a bark graft or something like that like I've done in my other videos um, it's okay to graft those on and leave what's above it, but in the future, you are going to have to cut that off. Uh, the growth above the graft is gonna have to be removed. If you don't remove it, that graft more than likely is not gonna grow. It's gonna fuse on and it's gonna sit there and never do anything. Uh, nine times out of 10, I would say. Some instances they do grow and you're okay, but for the most part, you want to graft onto the branch and have nothing above that branch that is the original tree. So I hope you can follow that. Kind of confusing, but uh, once you start doing it, uh, it'll make sense. So guys, if you have any questions on doing this, um, if I wasn't clear on something, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, input and feedback so I could start making these videos a lot better. Um, I'm not using a microphone today, so I apologize if the audio is not the best. Um, I was having issues with batteries and I had to use a external battery case which removes my microphone from the mix. So um, I'm gonna get on to the cuttings now, the cuttings portion. So basically what we're gonna do with these cuttings is we're gonna cut them down to about six to eight inches and then we're going to put them in a bin the bin is a dollar store bin if you've watched my other videos you know exactly how i do this and uh it, i've had great luck with it this is the best time of the year to start cuttings uh figs mulberries apples any sort of ficus uh, stone fruits they, they all do great this time of the year uh just keep them in full shade uh keep them moist don't let them dry out if they dry out they're gonna die um, and that's basically it. So let's get on to these cuttings. All right, guys, we're going to get into this mulberry cutting thing real quick here. So we're going to use a dollar store bin. Um, this is from the Dollar Tree. It's, I don't know, I would say uh, probably about four or five inches deep, uh, maybe a foot long or a foot wide or so, a little bit longer. Um, what I did was I punched with a knife holes in each corner for drainage. We're gonna fill this up with perlite all the way to the top. And we're gonna pre-moisten it and let it soak or absorb the water for about uh, probably 15, 20 minutes or so. And then we're just gonna stab our cuttings in. All right guys, so it's been about uh, 20 minutes and we got our perlite pre-moistened. It's filled pretty close to the top. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna take these cuttings. They're cut about six seven inches long and we're going to take these guys and we're going to make sure they're oriented right so we want the bud pointing up and we're just going to stab them in i'm not going to use any rooting hormone because in my opinion it's not really needed with these if you have a really hard to root variety you can give it a try if you have some on hand it's not going to hurt These guys don't have to be spaced out very far. I'll leave about a, an inch of space between each one. One thing you gotta try to do with these is get them more than halfway under the perlite. You don't want uh, too much sticking out because they will dry out. All right, guys, I have some left over and I ran out of space, so I started a second bin. This is just a, a salad bin from the store that salad came in. Same thing, I, I poked four holes in the bottom, perlite, pre-moistened it, and we're just gonna stab these guys in also. So I kept these medium-sized cuttings separate from these little twigs. It's a good idea to do that because if you try to root out different size cuttings, Sometimes they have different watering requirements. These guys will start to dry out first because they are bigger and they're gonna produce more leaves, bigger leaves faster than these little 
twigs. So we'll keep the, the smaller ones separate from the bigger ones. It's always a good idea to do that. All right, guys. So they're all uh, in their bins. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use some pruning sealer, which is a black tar, it's petroleum base that smells just like asphalt. And we're gonna go and we're just gonna lightly put a little blob on top of any cut ends. If it's got a butt at the top, you don't have to worry about it. But what we're trying to do with this is we're just trying to seal the ends to reduce evaporation and get better success. So just a little glob, touch it. Any of these tops, even if they're teeny tiny, oop, just put a little glob on there. All right, guys, so we're all done with these. They're gonna go onto a rack and they're gonna be in shade. So absolutely zero direct sunlight on them. And they're gonna stay like that for probably about two months. And the good thing is this one's clear, so we'll be able to see roots coming out of these guys. Um, this one's not, but usually what you wanna do with these is you wanna wait until they're vigorously growing, putting out lots of top growth and then comes the tricky part of getting them out of the bins without destroying all the roots and potting them up. So we're gonna let these guys go on the rack with all their other cuttings. And uh, probably in about two months, these guys will be ready to individually pot up and they'll take uh, probably another two, three months to root out. So probably mid-summer, um, they should be pretty well rooted and ready for sale or to give away or we could use them as rootstock and graft other varieties onto them. So I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, I'm gonna keep cranking these out. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, tell all your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep growing, guys.